Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, just thought I'd do a quick video um, just on my recent uh, pickups. Uh, very excited about this, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. Uh, but also to say um, I've just hit 50 subscribers, actually 52. Um, and yeah, really appreciative of everyone who subscribed to my channel. I mean, 50 subscribers isn't a big deal to a lot of people. Um, you know, many channels out there have got millions of subscribers, but 50 is a big deal for me. You know, I've not been making uh, video content for my channel uh, for that long, really. Just started sort of mid last year. And yeah, 50, I, I never thought I'd have one or even 10 subscribers. So 50 um, is, is brilliant. So uh, really, really grateful. Uh, grateful for that guys thank you um, and hopefully after uploading this video to my channel uh, hopefully you've still uh, stayed su subscribed to my channel uh, and haven't unsubscribed uh, I, I know um, that's always a worry for for people making YouTube content that uh, you'll do a, a um, a 50 subscriber special video and then you'll lose subscribers so I mean that can happen and if it does well it is what it is but uh, anyway um, the main purpose of this video is to uh, share with you a recent pickup uh, I've spent a bit of money recently thought I, my birthday is coming up and I thought I'd treat myself to something that I've wanted for many many years and uh, this is a, a games console that I remember seeing in the games magazines back in the day when I was a kid and when I was a teenager and it was in the I think it was CMVG, uh, Computer and Video Games magazine in the UK, uh, was a popular game gaming magazine that I used to pick up. And I always used to see this console in there and used to think, what is that? What, what's that all about? Always wanted one, but, you know, they, they just weren't... Um, uh, I, I just couldn't get one uh, I, at the time. Back then, I didn't really know any um, uh, gaming import shops. Um, not when this was released anyway and so I, I, I just had no means of, of actually getting one but uh, it's this beauty here and uh, if you're wondering what this is it's actually it's a gaming console from the um, early 90s and it's uh, a PC engine uh, so if you've heard of a PC engine that was the name of the gaming console uh, that was released in Japan. I like that name for the console, and then it was sort of repackaged, just made into a bigger machine for the uh, US market, and it was released um, a couple of years after in America as the um, Turbo Graphics 16. And it didn't do as well in the US, it did far better in, uh, in Japan because it was released a couple of years before, and there was so many more games for it. Uh, that they weren't all ported over to, only a small portion of the uh, Japanese PC Engine games were ported over to the uh, TurboGrafx-16 console in the US. And in my opinion, some of the best games just were not ported over to it. So this is a Japanese console. Uh, I went for this one because uh, there was a guy on eBay, it's quite popular actually, he mods these so he does you know, all the bells and whistles on it. Um, this originally would have uh, uh, composite uh, out uh, the original PC Engine um, version of the console which was would just play the um, normal hue cards uh, which I may as well explain now uh, here you've got the uh, hue card slot so um, the game slot in there they're just little cards like little game credit card size games and they slot in so the original PC engine was just was just this part basically, um, and they've had many 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 variations of the console. But um, yeah, it was originally just played the hue cards, and so yeah, you, you bought the PC engine from Japan or the Turbo Graphics 16 from the US, which was a lot bigger. But again, just had the the hue card slot, and then um, I suppose to compete with the uh, Sega Genesis uh, or Sega Mega Drive and the uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System 
uh, they brought out a, a CD-ROM attachment. So if you were one of the original owners of the normal PC Engine or TurboGrafx-16, you could buy the CD-ROM attachment and in effect buy the, um, I suppose they were slightly enhanced games because uh, of the storage capacity of the CD-ROMs. And you could buy the games on the, on the CD-ROMs, uh, the, 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 the games that they released for that format. Um, and you could play them on the system. Uh, now, if you had one of the original systems, um, you would need to play the, uh, as far as I'm aware, to play the CD-ROMs, ROM games, you would need a system card, which you'd need to, which was just like a Hue card that you plugged in here and it added extra memory that enabled you to um, play the CD-ROM games. And then they released Super CD-ROM games. And again, you needed uh, I think it was a version 2 um, system card and again that came on a on a Hue card and that plugged in and that would enable you to play the Super CD-ROM games on your CD-ROM attachment. Uh, they then released uh, arcade CD-ROM games and again you'd need an arcade card for that. Again it came on a Hue card and that added extra extra memory uh, which could be read off the off the card uh, through the cue card slot and enable you to play these arcade ROM C, uh, CD ROM games. Um, and uh, the reason why I bought this version, this is a Duo R, the Japanese version. And the reason why I bought this um, this console uh, was because it was from a certain seller on eBay, and he pretty much gets loads of these, he mods them. So this has had like the region mods, which I'll go into um, in a little while. The games are region coded. So basically, if you've got this, which is a Japanese console out of the box, it wouldn't play the TurboGrafx-16 Hue cards. Uh, so this guy mods it and this little switch here. So switched up at the moment. And so that plays just basically the normal PC engine, the Japanese versions of the games and you flick it down and then that enables you to play the TurboGrafx-16, the US versions of the games. So um, so yeah, it just means that uh, I, I can buy TurboGrafx-16 and PC Engine Hue cards. Generally, the PC Engine Hue cards are cheaper than the uh, US versions, but uh, most of the uh, Japanese games, well, the ones that I want anyway, uh, are, are very playable, you, you know, they're, um, you, you know, unless you're going to go picking up a, a role-playing game, an RPG on PC Engine, then you, you steer clear of, uh, unless you can speak <laughs> and read Japanese, you'd steer clear of those releases generally. Uh, but there are some exceptions. So, uh, yeah, I just like to have, um, uh, have the best of both worlds, really. So that's what that is. Um, the CD-ROM attachment is here. As far as, as far as I'm aware, it's a one-time speed CD-ROM drive. Uh, and uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that this was the first CD-based console uh, before the PlayStation 1. Um, so it was one-time speed. But uh, yeah, so you can play the CD-ROM games in there. And uh, yeah, some of the loading on some of the games is pretty bad, but you know, if, for those of you out there who had the original PS1, it's going to be nothing, nothing different to, to that really. So um, yeah, and incidentally, the CD-ROM is actually uh, region free. So there's no copy protection or anything. So in effect, if you've got the images of the CD-ROM games, you could actually burn them onto a blank CDR and uh, you could actually play that burnt copy of the game on the on the system. Uh, it's not something that I really want to do. I want to try and buy the games that I want to uh, I want to play. But um, it's good that uh, it is region free. You can do that. You can test games out if you want to, and it will play the US games and the Japanese um, CD-ROM games on the system out the box. So there was no modification needed for that. Uh, on the back there. Uh, this has been modded, so it's um, it would still take composite out, 
and also RGB mods, so RGB SCART. Yeah, this came bundled with the RGB uh, SCART cable, which the seller just makes himself and bundles with it. Quite a good quality one. Uh, and it comes with the um, uh, one joypad he bundled in with it, which I'll come to later. I'll show you guys that later. And if you're thinking, well, hold on a minute, why is there only is there only one player games on the system? There's only one uh, joypad port. Well, no, uh, there are some games that are up to five players. Uh, I think uh, Bomberman might be one of those. So you had to purchase an additional accessory, a multi-tap, and what that. Uh, enabled you to do was plug into here and then that gives you on it the um, five controller ports so you can plug, plug in five controllers into that why they didn't do standard two two uh, controller ports as standard like they did with well every other console I don't know why it was a bit silly really because there's, there's times I've chucked this machine on and I just want to play a game of Street Fighter with my sons and I can't because I haven't got a multi-tap at the moment and you know I've just got the standard console uh, but I went for this version of it the Duo R the Japanese because um, from what I've read these consoles are really old I mean you're talking about the um, I think late 80s early 90s for the Duo consoles and uh, there's there's a lot that can go wrong with the early consoles um, bad capacitors and things like that. So this has had, uh, as far as the, you know, Purcell has been truthful to me, uh, he's replaced most of the bad capacitors in here um, and he's done some other, uh, some other modifications to it as well. Um, I can't remember off the, uh, off the top of my head, obviously the RGB mod, um, but he's also done, um, is it the gel bar fix or um, something like that? That's, that all goes way above my head. But uh, yeah, it comes with all the bells and whistles. He's cleaned it up as well. He puts it through some washer, special washer machine, bleaching machine. So uh, as you can see, I questioned him why there's no serial number on it. And he said that comes off during the bleaching process. So the whitening process, because these uh, early consoles and the uh, the NES and the Super Nintendo were, were prime examples of, of that happening too. Uh, they would become discoloured over time, yellow, yellowing and things like that, like um, Amiga, the old Commodore, um, Commodore 64 and Commodore Amiga and Atari ST, they go yellow after time. It's just something that they used in the plastic at the time. Uh, and it, it can actually affect the console from what I've read. It can make the plastic brittle and everything over time if it's not treated. I'm not sure if if that's 100% accurate, but that's what I've read. So this guy just bleaches them all, so it comes up quite nice. It's in pretty good, good condition, to be honest with you. But yeah, that's the console. Um, just show you guys some games. Uh, I'll go through these in more detail when we have a closer look at the console and everything. But um, yeah, I just picked up a bundle of games. So the first one is uh, Space Harrier. So it comes in like a little CD case. Uh, if I open, I'm not going to open them all up, guys. Uh, I'll probably do that later. But uh, yeah, so inside you've got the little card, a little clip holding it on, uh, and it comes with. Um, so the inside cover is like uh, it is the manual as well, and I absolutely love that uh, manuals. Only manuals for the games. I'm old school, I grew up with manuals and, you know, I can understand why they've stopped doing it, you know, for the environment and all that, to save on, um, you know, resources and all this, but uh, I just love having having a manual. So, yeah, that's Space Harrier. Um, the next game I'm going to show you. Okay, the next pickup, I got all these games together from, uh, from one seller, but this is Legendary Axe. Legendary Axe 2. Keith Courage in the Alpha Zones. I'm not sure why I got this game. I think it was only a couple of dollars, so, uh, so I thought, why not? Uh, R-Type. Uh, Sidearms, 
Now, there's quite a few shooters here and the PC Engine Turbo Graphics 16 are known for shooters, really good shooters, arcade shooters and that. So um, Bloody Wolf and I love this game, um, really love it. I mean this game was on the uh, Data East, because um, this was a Data East arcade game, it was on the Data East uh, Mini uh, arcade machine and I loved it on that and I think that was the first time I actually played the game believe it or not but I loved it on that um, so it's good to have it on the TurboGrafx-16 which uh, I believe is an enhanced version of the arcade game so uh, Blazing Lasers really good uh, shoot em up uh, and those were all American US games TurboGrafx-16 games and uh, this one I got this is a Japanese game, PC Engine, Street Fighter 2, uh, Champion Edition, and apparently this was never released, uh, it was never released on the TurboGrafx 16, so you can only buy it on PC Engine, on Japanese copy. It comes in this like double case, but it is just one Hue card, and uh, the manual and everything in there. And uh, it's really, really good version of the game. Uh, it really, really is. And um, I, I mean, in my opinion, it, it's right up there with the with the SNES version of it. Uh, and in my opinion, I prefer it to the SNES version. It, it's just a brilliant version of uh, of the game. And if you buy a PC Engine or a Duo R, you have to pick this game up because um, it's quite cheap as well. I mean, this is in perfect condition and it's pretty cheap. And um, yeah, I've got another game there. This is, uh, if you can see that. I got this one loose. This was the first game I bought, and then I started picking up the box games. So I kind of wished, oh, I wish I'd got this box, but this is Operation Wolf. So there's the Hue card. If you can see there, it's like a little credit card size card, and that slots in the machine, which I'll show you in more detail later. But yeah, I picked this up and um, <laughs> on its own and, and then regretted it because, I don't know, my OCD, once I start collecting games in boxes, I have to collect them all in the boxes. So what I've done um, a couple of days ago, actually, there was a seller uh, locally to me selling this in the box, so I bought a box copy. So I'll probably just get rid of this, uh, this version and stick to just box copies of the games. I also picked up some CD-ROM games, so this is a CD-ROM game, and this is Altered Beast. And if we open that up, again it comes with the, uh, the manuals, and there's the CD-ROM. This is just a standard CD-ROM game. Uh, this uh, also, which I'll show you in detail later, the manuals, what I'm noticing on the Japanese copies, they're in colour. But on the TurboGrafx-16, they're in black and white. Now, I'm not sure if that's true for every released game, but for the ones that I've certainly picked up so far, that seems to be the case. So, um, And also, the artwork actually on the CDs and on the Hue cards themselves are just better on the PC Engine Japanese versions of the games than the TurboGrafx US versions of the games, which is what I've noticed anyway. But yeah, I picked this one up. I had this game on the Sega Mega Drive back in the day and really, really loved it. I think it, came, it was the packaged in game. Uh, so I had that game for a while, couldn't afford many games back then. And I loved that version of the game. And Altered Beast was released on normal Hue card for the PC Engine, uh, which I don't have. But uh, there was a lot of speech and everything cut out of it. So this uh, is an enhanced version of the game. And it is good, uh, there's a lot of elements that are direct from the arcade port, which weren't in the Sega Genesis version of the game. But I think I do prefer the Sega Genesis version of the game, and that is primarily because of the pausing in between um, certain levels, uh, or certain parts of the game, like the, um, the wolf and dragon transformations, or, or the beast transformations. There's a pause which interrupts the gameplay somewhat. So... Yeah, I, I still do prefer the Sega Mega Drive version of the game, but it's good to have anyway. Another game I picked up, and this was, uh, I picked this up because I wanted one CD-ROM game to test the CD-ROM feature that it was all working on the, uh, on the Duo R, but also I picked up, I uh, wanted to pick up a Super CD-ROM, 
And uh, yeah, this one is Shadow of the Beast. Again, this is all boxed and complete. There's the disc, and there's the booklet. Yeah, if we look at the booklet, this is a US version, it's all in black and white, so I will have to check that out, but all the games I've got so far, uh, it does seem to be the case that the US versions of the games are all black and, the manuals are black and white, and the, the actual artwork on the cards is pretty terrible, on the Hue cards is terrible, and on the CD-ROMs, it's far better on the actual, um, it's far better on the, uh, on, on the Japanese versions of the Hue cards and the CD-ROMs. But yeah, so those are my pickups. Uh, as you can see behind, I've just been playing on the Neo Geo. I've got a bit of a sound problem with it at the moment. The um, sound's really low, so I'm hoping it's not a problem with the Neo Geo motherboard. I'm hoping it's just a loose wire or something from the Neo Geo one-slot motherboard in this cab to the actual, um, you know, uh, to the actual... Um, speaker on the uh, on the arcade cab so i need to have a look at that at some point but yeah that's a bit alarming but the uh, the sound out of the the headphone socket is absolutely fine and there's a headphone uh, volume uh, slider on the actual motherboard and that works and there's a speaker volume slider as well and uh, yeah it's uh, so yeah there's an issue with that that i'll have to fix at another time but anyway i've got way off the point but um but yeah, those are my pickups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this uh, um, Duo R up to my TV and do some gameplay like I usually do. Uh, but also I'll give like a general overview over the actual um, of the actual console. And uh, yeah, so you guys can uh, check that out. But uh, once again, guys, thanks, thanks so much to all of all of you who have subscribed to my channel. 50 subscribers brilliant thought i'd do this little special video this is a machine that i've always wanted since i was a since i was a teenager saw it in the magazines and uh, thought what, what's that all about and it's taken me all these years like 30 years to actually get one haven't religiously been after one all those years there were other things on my list like my neo geo obviously that the neo geo aes and then mvs and the mvs cab and the arcade and the Astro City arcade machine. So there was a list of things I wanted from a child, you know, from my child childhood or teenage years that I saw and thought I'd never be able to get them. And you know, I'm in my forties and I've been picking these up. And the PC Engine, I think, was the pretty much one of the last things that I wanted. So uh, my birthday coming up in a week's time. So I thought I would uh, I would grab it, but uh, I'll um, set that up, guys, and we'll see some gameplay. Okay, guys, let's take a closer look at this uh, console, uh, which was designed by Hudson Soft and uh, produced by NEC Home Electronics. Uh, there we can see on the front the uh, PC Engine Duo R logo with the uh, NEC logo also on the front of the uh, console. Uh, the original PC Engine was released in Japan in 1987, but wasn't released in the US until 1989, as I've already mentioned, as the TurboGrafx-16. Um, both only offered RF output, uh, which a lot of consoles offered at the time, but um, as you can probably remember, that was just the it was like the standard aerial socket of the TV and didn't offer a great picture. Uh, an AV booster accessory was released later on, which clipped onto the back of the consoles and enabled uh, composite out. Now, apparently, uh, the PC Engine did have a limited release in the UK and Spain, uh, which was just known as the Turbo Graphics. But in all honesty, uh, I never ever saw one in the UK and certainly never knew anyone who owned one. I always wanted one, saw them in the back of the magazines, but uh, obviously uh, just never had the means to get one. Uh, the Japanese PC Engine was imported and distributed in uh, France in 1989. 
Uh, but incidentally, the normal Turbo Graphics uh, machine that was released in the UK, uh, I do know, I, I see some of them coming up on uh, eBay um, from time to time. Uh, and apparently they suffered from, they were PAL machines and suffered from the, um, the slow uh, 50 hertz um, from what I've read. So I would avoid those uh, if, if you were going to pick one up. Uh, the name uh, TurboGrafx-16 is rather misleading for the US release because it was only ever an 8-bit uh, CPU inside this machine uh, and was intended to compete with the 8-bit NES, which it did out outsell in Japan. Uh, however, it does have 16-bit color encoders and video display controllers, so it's like it is a hybrid, really. Uh, here we can see the hue card slot, and there's the multi-region uh, switch that was added by the seller who sold me this console. Uh, up is will play PC Engine hue cards, and flicking it down will play Turbo Graphics 16 hue cards, and that's it really. So uh, yeah, get the best of both worlds. Uh, can play cards from all region. Uh, there's the on off switch. Uh, you click it to on, and it holds the hue card in place so it doesn't fall out of the machine. Uh, and you can keep the cover, uh, the hue card cover open um, or closed, depending on your preference when you're playing the games. Uh, here, just trying out my Operation Wolf hue card in the hue card slot. Just slide straight in. Obviously, you've got to put the switch to up as this is a PC Engine game. And then just hit the, uh, hit the switch. You can keep that down, but my personal choice, I just like to see the hue card in there. So when I've got a hue card in there playing the game, I always keep the, um, the cover up. So yeah, as I was saying, this is like a hybrid machine really with the 8-bit CPU, but the 16-bit color encoders or 16-bit or graphics basically. Incidentally, the original PC Engine, um, the one that I remember seeing in the uh, in the gaming magazines, the PCN, uh, the, the CMVG back in the day, was the smallest ever home console. Uh, here we can see that's the the, the light, um, which will tell you if the CD-ROM uh, is actually in the CD-ROM drive. There's a CD-ROM drive, as I mentioned earlier. I think it's a one-speed, and that just closes shut. There's the controller port, uh, and as I said in the introduction to this video, there's only one controller port on this console, and that was a major flaw in my opinion. So you couldn't even play two player games out of the box, but you could purchase the additional accessory, the multi-tap, which then offered um, up to five players for games that support, supported multi-players, um, up to five. Uh, Bomberman, I think, was generally the only one I know um, off the top of my head but uh, certainly if you wanted to play the bulk of the two player games you would need the multi-tap device or accessory. There we have the uh, the AC, AC port, AC adapter port on the console. Uh, I do believe it's 9 volt and there is the AV out. So incidentally the um, the power supply was actually supplied with this console by the seller um, and in order to use it in my country which is Australia because it's a Japanese power supply I would have needed to use a um, step down transformer generally I don't like doing this because they are prone to overheating so I sourced um, a third party one made by a seller he's got a website in France I believe and he makes them for all these old consoles so he made makes them specifically for the Duo R. It's the correct voltage and everything else. So I purchased one of those and it, it just plugs straight into the, the wall socket here. So I'd rather that than using the step down transformer. This is at the RGB mod, so um, RGB SCART, and it still supports uh, composite out. Uh, and the seller did supply both of those leads. Um, he actually makes the um, RGB SCART leads, uh, which I believe um, 
are shielded RGB SCART cables that he makes really high quality. And as we saw on the bottom, no serial number um, on there because this seller actually um, bleaches these machines and it comes off in the bleaching process. Wasn't too happy about it, but nothing I can do. Uh, and the feet were on the bottom. Uh, there we have the uh, cables I mentioned, the, the AC adapter, the composite cable, and the RGB SCART cable, which he actually makes. It's pretty good quality. I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, this console, like I've already said, has already been modified. It's had the RGB modification, the region switch, which I've shown you, sink cleaner installed with gel bars fix, low pass filter on off, and the old bad uh, capacitors have been replaced. So pretty good. And the AV output is obviously, like I've said a million times, composite video and RGB. Uh, but I always use RGB on this um, when I'm playing it. Uh, here's the control pad. Uh, they were supplied, uh, this is one of the original control pads, I believe. Uh, as you can see, it's two buttons. And there's those um, little switches above each of the uh, two buttons. And what they provide is um, turbo fire and that's why pretty much this console got the name turbo graphic 16 in america because it offered the turbo function on the control pads which is useful for the shooters so you you're you're playing the side scrolling and vertical shoot -em ups where you have to quickly rapidly hit the button where you can just hit the um put the slider up hold down the button and you can just do the rapid fire and there was the start and the run button on their, um, no sorry, the select and run button. So the run is generally like the start on, on other control pads for um, for other systems like the SNES and Mega Drive, but for some reason they called it run on this system. There's the third party uh, AC adapter that I was telling you about, I bought from a seller in France, pretty good. Um, I went for the UK plug, uh, so uh, yeah, fantastic. And this is a control pad that was actually released when they uh, released um, or made for the console when they uh, released Street Fighter Champion Edition uh, because just the two buttons, it's quite difficult to play Street Fighter on that when it's a uh, you know, six button game, three uh, punches, three kicks. So this offers all of the, uh, all, you know, all of the six buttons on there and all of the auto fire or rapid fire buttons as well. So pretty good controller, and I do recommend that you pick one up if you're gonna pick up uh, the fighters in here, specifically Street Fighter 2. Um, it does make playing the game a lot easier. Okay, here's the first game. This is Blazing Lasers. This is on the TurboGrafx-16. Um, it's just the box. In there, you have uh, the cover is actually the manual as well. You've got the hue card there, and it's pretty good. I do like having uh, having manual space harrier. Again, the uh, card the manual and the reacts again on the turbo graphics 16 Here we have again Turbo Graphics 16, Legendary Axe 2, and the Hue card. Uh, you also get this little clip uh, which holds the uh, yeah holds the Hue card in place, and they come in these little plastic sleeves.
Keith Courage in Alpha Zones, again Turbo Graphics 16. Again, you get the uh, Hue card. Little comic book. The manual. There's a little comic book that was included. A type. Again, the cue card, uh, the little clip's broken there. Got to remember these games are really old, so they're not going to be perfect. Game comes with a manual. Died arms. We're going for the Turbo Graphics 16. There's the, um, the Hue card. Uh, the clip's broken there. We have the manual. I do love having manuals in the games. Probably my favourite game uh, on the system <laughs> so far. I just love it for some reason. And this is on the TurboGrafx-16, Bloody Wolf. Uh, this is based on the arcade game. Uh, again, the Hue card there, the booklet. I just love playing it. The music is great, the graphics are pretty good, the gameplay is pretty good. Um, I really like uh, and enjoy playing this one. Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Uh, this is absolutely superb. Again, this is one of my favourite games, um, but it, it comes with all these little bits in there. It's with the book, the Hue card, uh, which is actually thicker than the standard um, Hue card. And this is a full color manual. And as you noticed on the Hue card, the uh, actual artwork on the Hue card, which is better than the TurboGrafx-16 releases of the games. Brilliant manual that. these as well keep those in there okay you have some CD games here this is a CD-ROM game this is Altered Beast this was also on released on Hue card but the CD version has some enhancements uh, in my honest opinion it's still not as good as the Sega Genesis version of the game uh, which I owned back in the day, uh, but there we have the disc, the artwork, and a manual. Here we have a super CD-ROM game. Uh, this is Shadow of the Beast. This is for the TurboGrafx-16. 
Um, incidentally, that other CD-ROM game was for the PC Engine, but it doesn't matter with CDs because the CD drives in these machines are region free out of the box. So you don't need any modification like you would with the Hue cards. But uh, we'll open up, there's the CD, there's the manual. Uh, that's just a brief overview. So what I'm going to do, as I always do on my channel, is uh, I'm going to hook this up to my TV, to my capture device, and capture some gameplay. Okay guys, so on to some gameplay, I uh, showed you the games, this is Blazing Lasers, uh, as you can see this is a vo uh, vertical scrolling shooter by Hudson Soft and Compile, it was released in Japan and North America in 1989 for the NEC PC Engine and Turbo Graphic 16. Uh, as you can see the gameplay uh, features very fast vertical scrolling and a wide variety of weapons um, for your disposal. It was actually one of the first releases for the TurboGrafx-16 and uh, it is really held in high regard uh, and I really do love it. It's got intense gameplay, great sound as you can see um, and doesn't have much slowdown. Uh, I'm pretty crap at these games so uh, this is probably going to be very short gameplay. As you can see, good weapons. Um, PC Engine actually has loads and loads of, uh, of shooters, to be honest with you, but th this is one of the best. Uh, I do like this, but uh, I just can't get very, <laughs> can't get very far on the uh, on the game, to be honest with you. But um, so you can see, it's good to just pick up the weapons um, and try to hang on to them. And if you get hit, you obviously. Uh, you lose your weapons, but uh, they downgrade them. Oh, damn it. That wasn't good, was it? Is it going to put me right back to the beginning? As you can see, like the enemy um, or, or your actual ship that you're flying. Uh, it, it's just huge, isn't it? It's, it's just a, like a huge sprite and um, it's just absolutely, absolutely great. I'm, I'm loving having this um, PC Engine or this Duo R at the moment. It, it, it's rapidly becoming my, my favourite my favorite system. Um, I still do play on the Neo Geo more. That, that's always going to be my number one favourite system. I think because it was always one of those machines that I always wanted back in the day but never thought I'd have and uh, obviously ended up getting one, um, got the AES and the MVS so that, that's my number one system but this is definitely up there for me and I've been playing on it loads recently. Let's see if we can shoot all of these.
Ah, oh, did that bit. The trick is to just keep pounding away <laughs> and moving, obviously. Yeah, you can move left and right and up and down. I mean, to begin with, I was just moving left and right for some reason, just similar to. Uh, I must have forgot I was playing uh, a PC Engine game. I must have thought I was playing um, the original uh, Galaxian or Gallagher or whatever. But uh, yeah, pretty good. Okay, on to the next game. And this is Keith Courage in the Alpha Tones, uh, 1989 science fantasy action platform video game that was released by NEC for the Telegraphic 16. Uh, the video game was uh, also originally released in Japan by uh, Hudson Soft on, um, in 1988 for the PC Engine. Uh, but this is the Telegraphic 16 version I got for a few dollars. Go in these huts, damn it, you can get hit. Okay, you've got some RPG elements there. You can jump, you can attack. I hate jumping bits, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> I tend to uh, steer clear of uh, platforming games. Let's see if we can make it along here. Graphics are okay, they're not the best I've ever seen, but oh, where are we going now? Oh, okay. Not really played this before. We're ah, we turned in. Oh, this is where the um, where the uh, science fantasy comes into it, I suppose. It's a gun on uh, a gun on legs by the look of things. Damn it, I keep getting hit by the enemy. Falling down there, so that's pretty good. You can't, you can't exploit that. Looks like the enemy just keep keep looking at you. The game stop. I don't like those games. I prefer it, you know, they're in their set places or whatever. And you kill them and don't keep respawning. But, uh, they are the 
relentless in this game. Now, where are we going? Is this a boss? Two of them. One of them, and I've got the other one. Okay, I might quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> okay. So this is Legendary Axe. Now this is a horizontal uh, platform video game for the PC Engine Terra Graphics 16. It was developed by Victor Interactive Software, published by Victor in Japan and NEC North America. It was released in Japan for the PC Engine in 1988, Terra Graphics 16's launch in 1989. So it's a Terra 16 launch game and this is the Terra Graphics 16 version of the game. Uh, it's often held as one of the best adventure games seen at the time um, yeah graphics I don't think the graphics are too great they're not bad and it's got platforming elements which I absolutely hate yeah you've got this weapon that you can hit them with and they seem to love jumping so I'll hit those hit those guys bats flying These bears. Ah, oh, damn it. Doing too well. As you can see you've got the health bar at the top left of the screen, which mine's going down pretty quickly. Can't work out a pattern how to kill these bears. Ah. Oh. And I'm dead. Let's have another go, shall we? and sent us right the way back to the beginning so that's pretty good hate it in games when they do that uh, incidentally I've noticed that most of these PC Engine games you've got limited lives and continues and I think they're very very um, these games are very very tough in my opinion and the limited lives and continues doesn't help I'm not really a fan of that I suppose uh, with modern era of gaming we've become accustomed to you know unlimited lives unlimited continues you can just keep going till you finish the game but these old games you had to really um, know what you were doing or work out how to get through the through them <laughs> as you can see I lost my lives I died on the bears again so on to Legendary Acts 2, so um, again this is a horizontal platform video game created in 1990 by Victor Interactive Software and is obviously a follow up to the um, previous game that we uh, just looked at, Legendary Acts. Gameplay is similar uh, but it's obviously got enhancements uh, as you'd expect with a sequel. It's got visual changes. Uh, it's often compared to uh, Rastan this game, I remember that game back in the day. But um, yeah, again, this is an uh, American uh, US U card uh, Turbo Graphics 16 game. As we can see, the character moves uh, quite a bit better. He's got this big sword, reach on that. And I find this game a lot better to play, to be honest with you. I am going to try to uh, get through both games. Uh, I do like both of them, but I, I, I do prefer this from my um, short playthrough of both of these so far. Uh, I am preferring uh, this second one. Uh, we've switched our uh, sword for this um, spike on the chain. As 
as you can see, they all like to uh, jump, and these are zombies there. Tinkerbell. <laughs> so, whack her with the sword. Zombies are oh, chopping them, chop them in half. That's pretty good. Oh, chop the head off. They still uh, come charging at you. Perhaps it's a boss. I think it is. A stranger. What is this? Is it? Is it a robot? Is it an alien? Working until he decided to kick me. Game top left of my life, which I managed to kill the boss, so it wasn't bad. I think that's the furthest I've actually ever got in this game, but. Uh, Here we have R-Type. Uh, again, this is a um, TurboGrafx-16 game, and the difference between the TurboGrafx-16 game and the PC Engine version was the PC Engine version was actually split over um, two Hue cards called uh, R-Type 1 and R-Type 2. But on the uh, US version, this version, um, they put the whole game on one Hue card, so that is pretty good. Um, Classic side scrolling uh, shoot em up arcade game produced by IREM in 1987. Um, and these are considered fairly accurate ports to the arcade versions. I mean, look at the size of, <laughs> of, of your actual um, of your ship and the enemy sprites. It's superb, but this game is notoriously hard. Uh, I think I had this on one of the home consoles back in the day. It might have been the Master System, if I remember correctly. And it was so tough, it really was, uh, and it hasn't changed, I mean, I'm probably worse at it now than I was back in the day, but uh, let's see how far we can get, let's see if we can get to the, um, the first level boss. This is a classic shooter, I mean, this is... Uh, this is the... the um, the shooter that, that started it all, um, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, and it's bought loads and loads of clones. And generally, when you when you played one of the clones, you'd sort of say back in the day, well, me and my mates would, oh, it's another like R-Type game. And I always, even now, compare games to R-Type. But uh, the PC Engine Turbo Graphic, Graphic 16 have got absolute great um, shooters on the system. This is the boss, so let's see if we can do him. He usually does me, but uh, look at these. Ah! And there we, there we have it. He got me. On to the next game. This is Sidearms. Uh, this was released for the PC Engine in 1989 in Japan by NEC Avenue. Uh, the PC Engine version lacks the two-player feature from the arcade game, uh, and there are other changes. Uh, this TurboGrafx-16 port was actually published in North America uh, the same year by Radiant Software, so um, you often find that with the uh, PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 games. Uh, you have different developers um, for each version um, of the game, for some reason. They also, well, 
released a so-called improved version of this game for the uh, PC Engine CD-ROM, which was called Hyperdyne Sidearm Special. Uh, I've not played that though, so I can't comment. But this game's pretty tough. Uh, these little little robot things here hopping about uh, like bastards when um, when you lose your weapons. And that's another thing when you get hit. You do generally your weapons get downgraded, so it's best to just keep your weapons as long as you can and you'll get through the game. Otherwise, um, like I said, these little bastards, they will absolutely annihilate you. Yeah, again, uh, the sprites are, are pretty big. Um, I just think the graphics are amazing on this, uh, on this system. Uh, and he got me, and as you can see, I lose some of my weapons. I keep going. I find these games so difficult that I'm not the best at them, so I just wanted to show you guys some gameplay. The limited continues, as I was saying. Keep getting hit, keep losing weapons. It doesn't really help. Well, let's see if I can get through this. Uh, as you saw early on in the game, you can. Well, what, Depending on what button you press, one of the two buttons, uh, you can fire right or fire left to fire behind you as you have appear behind you as well. So that's quite helpful. Managed to do that boss, so I'll quickly exit out of that game. On to the next game. This is Space Harrier. Everyone should know about Space Harrier. Uh, this was an arcade video game developed and released by Sega Enterprises in the arcades in 1985. But this port was ported over to the PC Engine four years later in 1989. Uh, and as you can see, you're like a jetpack. And you can move up and down. And it's, uh, I suppose it's classed as an into the screen shooter. Again, this is for the TurboGrafx 16, this version. And. Uh, my only memory of this game really, because I never played it in the arcades back in the day, um, was on the Master System. I believe I had it on the Master System. And, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't remember much about it. It was pretty similar to this, but this isn't a bad port of the game. It still plays quite well. Doing very well. Not played this game in a while. Oh, he's turning red and he's dead. On to stage two. Let's do a bit of this as that was only short. I believe there's also a 32X version of this game, and I do have a, um, a Sega 32X. I know it wasn't a very popular uh, system, uh, but I actually i am quite fond of it. So I might actually pick this um, Space Harrier up on uh, the uh, Sega 32X and, and compare it to this version. It's bound to be better, but uh, it's pretty good. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, and on to Bloody Wolf. Now, uh, as I've <laughs> said repeatedly through this video, this is one of my favourite games, to be honest with you. You can select between the two players, um, Snake and Eagle, I do believe. Uh, this was released in Europe as Battle Rangers. Um, it's a run and gun arcade game released by Data East in the arcades in 1988. Um, basically you're one of two commandos and you take on a whole entire army with many weapons and defeat bosses at the ends to get through the levels. Um, you're like a random type character basically. Uh, the game was ported as a PC engine by Data East in 1989, published in 1990 in the US by NEC for October 16, which this version is. 
uh, the PC Engine Turbo Graphics 16 versions of the game um, have a lot of the same gameplay elements, level design, enemies, and everything, and items as the arcade version. It is considered an enhanced version of the original game, and I've played both versions, and uh, this is an enhanced version. I, I think the music's much better. I mean, listen to the music, listen to the soundtrack, in particular on this first level. It is great. The weapons are great. It's quite violent. You can see the guts of the enemy soldiers um, hanging out there. And rescue the hostages. You can jump on motorbikes. Um, fly around with motorbikes, still shooting everyone. It's absolutely fantastic. It's so enjoyable. You can throw grenades. Well, but um, yeah, shoot these explosive barrels, and the enemy just get blasted off the screen. It's fantastic. It really is. It's such an addictive game. Uh, such a sort of basic game, really. But the graphics are superb, I think. This soundtrack is, is, is amazing. Okay, right. Look at this, this motorbike. You have fuel there. Which sort of acts, sort of acts like uh, your health bar. There's a run button to get off the bike before it blows up and blows you up as well. Spread on that, that's unbelievable. Oh, let's go in here. Here we have like a mini boss, a shotgun man. I'm Snake. Close to the enemy, you pull out a knife and stab them, so that's pretty good. I just did that, almost died, I think. Okay, let's go up here and try and rescue this hostage. Get on another motorbike. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Lasted, but uh, it's only the, the bike taking the damage. about seven or eight levels on this, so I'm not sure how many I've not actually finished the game, but this is uh, one Turbo Graphics 16 game uh, that you actually give an infinite continuous, so that's really good. So you could, if you put a little bit of time and effort into it, you could actually get through the game. Uh, I do wish they'd done that with a lot of the other games, but um, I suppose for the challenge and everything, games of that era, the NES and the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive, you always had limited, or the majority of the time, you had limited uh, continuous, so uh, just make the game last a bit longer, I suppose. I'm sure I've got a month back in the day. Oh, I've done that boss, that was pretty good. Brilliant game. Stage 1 cleared. Well, so uh, it's all pretty good. Right, on to the next game. This is Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Uh, 
Uh, I don't really need to say much about this. Developed by Capcom for the arcades in 1992. PC Engine version was published by NEC Home Electronics and developed by Capcom actually. It was a, re- released exclusively in Japan in 1993. Now, I, I don't know why they didn't release this in the US for the TurboGrafx-16. It could have been because of the um, Capcom released the uh, Street Fighter 2 games on the Super Nintendo Sega Mega Drive. It could have been that they didn't want to compete with, um, with those consoles, uh, because in my opinion, this is an absolutely fantastic it's um, accurate to the arcade in my opinion it was released on a 20 megabit hue card which was pretty big for the time Uh, I'm playing this on the uh, Avenue Pad 6 uh, control pad which I picked up which was incidentally specifically made for this version of Street Fighter 2 for the PC Engine which added four additional action buttons um, just enables you to uh, play the game better basically uh, as this uses uh, three punches and three kicks you do need a six button control pad you can play it with the conventional um, or the uh, the standard two button controller but you need to use the run button um, along with the uh, nice combo there along with the uh, two attack buttons to basically switch your attacks uh, and the select button um, to toggle between punches and kicks is, uh, punches and kicks is punches and kicks uh, so it is a bit fiddly to be honest with you um, so this is my preferred way or my recommended way of playing this game uh, and it works quite well the d-pad is a little bit um, yeah after a while after a prolonged period of uh, of playing the game your thumb does start to ache on the d-pad uh, just similar I used to get the same on the um, on the Super Nintendo control pad as well on the d-pad uh, used to get blisters on your thumb and everything because I'm not used to playing this game uh, doing this play through it is hurting my uh, hurting my finger but let's douse him let's throw him as you can see the uh, the sounds and everything are pretty decent. The graphics are decent. Uh, it's got all the moves. Uh, this is a pretty good version of the game. Uh, I'm really loving it. Uh, I've played this one uh, quite a few times. I might actually do a gameplay video, a complete long play of this um, of this game. Just yeah, it's got all the moves, got all the sounds. Oh. No, I can't. Oh, surely not. Lost to douse him. Dragon Punch to finish him off. Brilliant. Yeah, plays really well this game and uh, looks fantastic in my opinion. Oh, it's not a good start against Ryu or Ryu, however you pronounce it. I always called him Ryu, so uh, I'll stick with that. Oh, 
game plays really well as, as you'd expect, so, as it did on all the other systems. Uh, I'm only really familiar with the uh, Super Nintendo version of the uh, game, that's what I had, that was the uh, packing game back in the day. I got the Street Fighter 2 bundle, so uh, I played this a lot on the Super Nintendo. Um, played it a hell of a lot in single player and multiplayer back in the day. But uh, this version plays really, really well. Um, really glad to have this. And uh, this is up there with Bloody Wolf for me as my f current favourite games on the system. But really loving having the, uh, the PC engine at the moment. Dragon Punch to uh, to end the battle wasn't bad. Came from two, well, came from one round down, and you've got the bonus stages in here as well. I do believe you've got the barrels as well, the barrel stage. Perfect. Okay, you don't have a hue card in the uh, in the system, which I haven't at the moment. It comes up with the uh, CD-ROM uh, screen. As you can see, it's version 3.0, so it has the uh, system cards built into the machine. Um, so you don't need the uh, CD-ROM system cards to play the game. And then when you, when you insert the game, which I've inserted a game in here, you press the run button and it will load the game. So if you've got the duo system, the only cards that you actually need uh, to play pretty much the whole library of games is just the arcade cards, uh, the duo arcade cards to play just the arcade CD-ROMs but other than that it will play the CD-ROM games and the Super CD-ROM games um, just as it is because it has the, uh, the system cards and therefore the extra RAM built into the machine so it's pretty good. Yeah this is Shadow of the Beast uh, it's a platform game uh, developed by Reflections, I believe, and published by um, Signosis in 1989. Original version was released for the Amiga. I had this on the Amiga back in the day. Um, it's later ported to many other systems. Uh, great, the, the, the great. Uh, the game, as you can see, has a great, great soundtrack. Uh, really, really great music, and in many ways, the music is actually better than the gameplay of the game. But uh, here we have the cutscenes, and you're transformed into a beast, as you can see here. So you transformed into a beast and you have to jump and punch your way through monsters, traps and everything uh, to basically try and regain your original human form. So you're not happy about being turned into a beast. Uh, this PC Engine version is the um, Super CD-ROM version. It was produced by Musical Industries and Signosis and released in 1992. And as we can see, or as we can hear here, the um, music is absolutely fantastic. I mean, when I first got this game, I just put it on and, and would just listen to the music and wouldn't actually play it. <laughs> wouldn't actually play the game. Because uh, the gameplay isn't great in my opinion, um, as we'll see in a minute, but 
this music is absolutely um, superb and you can tell that this is playing off of a Super CD-ROM. I did try doing a gameplay of Altered Beast guys, but uh, yeah, for some reason the game pauses or halts. It doesn't crash because you can still move your character, but it, you can't get to the end of level one. And I thought it was a problem with my disc, but um, I looked online and it is a problem, the game, you can only um, play it and get through the levels if you use um, the system card version 1.0. And as you could see, this system, this duo system has got 3.0, 3 so um, yeah, so it won't play properly. But uh, yeah, if I pick up a, a system card version 1.0, I believe I can put that in the Hue card slot and the, um, the game will play just fine. So I'll have to do that gameplay at another date, guys. So sorry about that. As you can see here, we're the beast and he automatically just runs when you push left or right. You can go left or right, but I found going left off the main, uh, the main screen is a lot easier than going right. Um, you just punch the enemy and they one hit, they go flying flying away, uh, these little loading screens are masked by um, by this little animation of you going down the stairs or going through doors or whatever, so that's pretty good. Again the music is fantastic, uh, playing off the CD and I haven't got a clue where I'm going, I have heard that uh, it's good to, um, unless you follow a guide, it's pretty much just trial and error working out where to go and when you do work out the correct way to go I've been advised that you just draw or write directions or write a little map or something just for future reference so that you can get through it but uh, here we have yeah, again different uh, variety of enemy just punch and put them and down the ladders This is one of those games I could just uh, just leave the CD on and listen to the music. It's a uh, brilliant, brilliant soundtrack for a game. And uh, that's what I love about these old games. Different than me. Just keep charging to you. Let's jump up. Let's not jump down there. So this is where it's a good idea to remember where you've been, which way, and or of course use a walkthrough or a guide that's really available on the internet in this day and age. Back in the day though, you just wouldn't have had that. We didn't have the internet before we, um, this was originally released. Well, I certainly didn't. And uh, yeah, you just had to rely on the code books and guide books that were given away with Back in the day. Oh, I miss those days, I miss the uh, old magazines, I had loads of them as well and uh, I got rid of them uh, not that many years ago actually, I had stacks of them, I think I was moving home and just wanted to get rid of stuff and I put them all in a, uh, back in the UK, put them all in a recycling sack, out for the rubbish terrible really regret doing that when I think about it now and telling you guys it just makes me cringe to be honest with you um, I had hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of uh, magazines and game guides and I've just thrown them all out it's just sickening I'm sure we've all done that at some point though some snakes sprint
little bit of that going, I really have. Those eyes that just keep appearing, opening and then closing. Really good effect. I had a feeling I was going back towards that. Oh no, look at that, they block your way so you can't, you can't go back. I'm going to die, aren't I? I'm going to die, oh no. And then we get the little death animation. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, please like and subscribe for more. Cheers.